Hello and welcome to another episode of Japan Crate Unboxing where I open up a crate of Japan Crate and this one is kind of special not just because it has a mini katana inside I guess we'll take a look at that in a second but also because this is my final Japan Crate video um, I'll get into more details at the end of the video but before I get into anything else I would just like to sort of make a public service announcement for anyone who subscribes to Japan Crate that doesn't live in the US, uh, I, I live in the UK. I'm assuming it'll affect people in other non-US countries. And that is, uh, unfortunately, they have chosen to ship via FedEx. Um, and it basically, you've got a higher chance of getting import fees now. And I had to pay an additional £50, which is something like $60, $65 or something just to get this shipped to my house. So this has cost me almost a hundred pounds. And what do I get for that? A crate that's in really bad condition. Uh, this side's got uh, like flap coming off and everything. <laughs> ah, but I'll get into that at the end of the video. I don't really want to sort of sour, you know, the rest of the video. Uh, I have left a timestamp if you just want to skip to that. But if you want to see what's in the crate anyway, you know, stick around. So on the front, uh, we've got a kind of cool 8 bit, uh, not 8 bit, 16 bit, I guess. It's kind of Street Fighter 2 era kind of fight thing going on between Ryo and Takashi. Who are they? I don't care. Uh, but this is because there is a mini katana. I don't know if that's a company or Japan Crate X mini katana. It sounds like they're a brand or something. Well, we got the logo there. We've got uh, their social media there. Got, oh, nice. Another. Another clean, crisp look at the back there. That is their website, which I highly recommend not going to. And at the back uh, is the blurb. If you want to read that, I don't care. Uh, right, so I am going to go slice this open now, and we'll take a look inside. All right, as usual, I won't be showing you guys what's in here. We'll just kind of be discovering together. Um, so this is the cheat sheet. Let's see, do they actually have uh, descriptions of the items? I am happy to say they actually do. Uh, last month's one, I was a little irked because um, on the inside was just like a QR code. It's like, oh, hey, just scan uh, and our website will tell you what's in there. And it's like, well, if you've got, you know, if you're printing stuff anyway, might as well. Uh, we've also got the bonus lottery scratch card thing. No, we don't. Oh, okay. Sometimes they do the lottery thing, but this is just, uh, yeah, there you go. Cool, if you want to buy uh, katanas, are they real size katanas? I don't know, uh, and I don't care, because I will definitely not be buying them, because I don't want to pay an extra £800. Right, sorry, I'll stop being salty now, and we'll just get on with it. Uh, right, so, ooh, first up, eggs? Are those... no? They look like like battered eggs. Is a hundred percent something? <laughs> I don't know what that says. Um, okay, I'm gonna see what these are. These are fluffy kinako mochi. So they're mochi that tastes of roasted soybean. That's really cool. I uh, I did not expect that. I thought these were gonna be potato chips or something. That is cool. And also kudos to them here. Uh, the 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 items do actually have descriptions again, and they're not just like weird funny descriptions or something. Ooh, ooh, this was a candy floss. And we've got a rabbit who's holding a panda, but it's like a plush, I think. And the panda's thinking, oh, I thought that was a thought, I thought that was a thought bubble, but no, that is a balloon with a dog on it. Um, this is Wata, Watagaru, Watagaru. Okay, this is definitely cotton candy of some kind. I can't find this on the cheat sheet anywhere. I don't know if it's like an extra they've thrown in, maybe, or um, or I'm just not seeing it. But regardless, it does seem like... Wow. What the heck is this? This is quite heavy. It's like... Is it jelly or ramen or something? Uh, oh, this is, this is rice, apparently. Okay. Red bean rice. Wow. That's cool. So this is microwavable, I'm guessing. It kind of feels like. This, honestly, this box is actually a little bit heavier than it is typically, so that is interesting. Let's find out what this is. 
This is indeed red bean rice. Um, it actually might not be microwavable, actually. I guess you can just probably pull it open and eat it. Um, I will be trying this on Japanese snack reviews, not immediately, but in one of the upcoming episodes. Uh, so stay tuned for that. That's very interesting. Uh, oh, we've got... Okay, I mean, I don't really even need to check what this is, but these are little, like, candy... Um, it's candy-shelled chocolate. If you live in the UK, they're kind of like Smarties, but I think Smarties are a different type of sweet in the US, which confused me for years. But let's double check. It looks like a key, I think. This is indeed key chocolate. Uh, does what it says on the packaging. It's not in a tin, so that uh, metaphor wouldn't work. Next up, we... Ah, oh! Oh, I recognise these dudes. Is this... Ah, strawberry. Okay, so uh, we've had this a few times. I did... It's a DIY kit, and this was on a previous episode of Japanese Snack Reviews, which is the cider flavour. It's kind of a DIY ice cream kit, where you put, like, um, uh, powder into water, and it forms up, and you get a little um, ice cream cone scoop it into. I'll be honest, these are not great. Um, just because the, like, fluffy... The fluffy, like, gel kind of thing you get is so thin and so non-substantial that when you sort of bite into it with the cone, it's weird, because the cone is hard, obviously, but the rest of it is just, like, soft foam. It it doesn't work. It looks like an ice cream, but it doesn't taste or feel like one. Uh, I'm guessing this is the strawberry version. This is Strawberry Soft Cream DIY. Uh, and, yeah, as I, as I explained... Uh, it's a DIY kit. It's fine. I mean, it's... Honestly, it's a good DIY kit in terms of, like, actually things that, you know, are easy to do and look like what you expect them to, but uh, otherwise, they're... Uh, is this chocolate? Oh, wait, no. Is this, like, a plum? I want to say this is some kind of dried plum, I want to say, with a traditionally dressed Japanese girl. Let's see. Hey, it is a pitted plum snack. There you go. I, I think... I've kind of, I've seen enough Japanese snacks now to know it's plum. Uh, the Japanese love plums for some reason. I guess they grow in Japan a lot or whatever. Okay. Uh, <laughs> wow, that is, that is a look. That is, you got a sticker on the back somewhere actually. Ameko's love. Candy, Ameko's love. Okay, these, I mean, these do feel like hard candies. I'm guessing they're sour. Judging from her face, unless it's meant to be like amazing taste and she's taken to Nirvana or something. What is this? This is Domyoji Umeko's Love Challenge. So I guess like they're really sour or something. They are plum. Uh, a lot of plum going on. I guess the samurai love plums or something. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> okay. I'm not even going to look these up because. Um, these are... I'm actually eating some of these at the moment. I have one a day as a treat. Uh, they are grape-flavoured gummy things. One of these is really sour. The other two are really quite nice and sweet. Uh, the sour one is proper sour as well. These are very cool. I've had them before. I'm pretty sure that, that uh, grape one specifically we've had about three times now. Ooh. We've got uh, white chocolate Kit Kat is what I'm going to guess. I'm not going to bother translating all the packaging because eh, we got a cheat sheet. This is white dough, maybe? Um, yeah, I think this is just white chocolate. This isn't on the cheat sheet either, so that's like two bonus things we've got now. Um, not complaining, you know, a bonus thing is always nice, but uh, yeah, okay, and this is patataman. Patataman. Potato man? Patataman. Is he the patataman? He looks like a man. Well, actually, he doesn't look like a man. He looks like a strange creature. What the heck is this? Good lord, my can is rusty. It's Banana Man, uh, not Patata Man. Uh, but yeah, this is Banana Man Chocolate... No, Banana Chocolate Marshmallow. Uh, there you go. That's actually really interesting. I guess it's like Banana Chocolate Covered Marshmallow or something? Because it feels kind of... Actually, no, it's, it's a bit spongier than I expected. Uh, fair enough. Next up, we've got these mints. Uh, oh, it's grape mint this time. Uh, another thing I'm not going to look up. They are small, kind of like, mints, basically, uh, in a plastic tube. 
I think we've had strawberry and cider flavour, so grape. I always like grape candies and stuff. I may have these at the end, actually. I'm gonna... No, you know what? I'm going to treat myself, as this is the last one. And I have the banana chocolate marshmallow at the end, so I'm going to keep that. I will be eating this in this video. Uh, it's like watching Japanese snack reviews, but you don't have to wait for me to edit them all over the space of several months. Uh, ooh! We've got grape stuff. Ooh, ooh, ooh. These feel quite nice. They're like gummies. I'm going to guess they're juice-filled gummies. Let's see if I'm right. These are a grape juice gummy. Uh, I think I hit the nail on the head. They don't mention if they're juicy inside, but I would be very surprised if they weren't. Next up, we... Ooh, I think this is the katana. Uh, you know why? Because it says samurai pens. I'm going to put that to the side. We'll open that at the end, I think, that because that's the whole, like, point of this video. Mm, ooh. This is a weird package. Uh, Koikea? Ah, so this is pure potato, right? I want to say. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it feels more like popcorn. It's weird. It's, like, it's such a weird package. It, like, feels like something you'd get in the mail. Like, sort of a bubble mailer. Okay, what is this? These are shellfish chips. Uh, okay. Not what I was expecting. Absolutely. Stay tuned for Japanese snack reviews. I will be trying those. I do like me some strange potato chips. We've got another white Kit Kat. White chocolate Kit Kat. Oh, and I think I feel a third. Let's go. All right, so we're not getting bags, but we're definitely getting a lot of them. That's the fourth one now. Getting like half a bag, which is nice, I suppose. Uh, ooh. ooh, mochi truffle or truth. But I'm guessing these are truffle flavoured mochi. Which, if so, I am all for. That, is, that sounds delightful. So it's chocolate truffle mochi. Uh, and yeah, sounds... It's panache or something like that. Um, let me just check around. There's a drink here. I want to make sure I'm not missing any little things. No. Okay, so... The, good lord, this is heavy. Uh, toku, tokuno. Tokuno. There you go. Cool. That, um, Mitsuya. It's a cool bottle. This is really heavy. Like, it's it's weirdly dense. It's like, I don't know what it is. is. Is it like jelly drink or something? I'm guessing. This is like the heaviest drink we've had in Japan, Crit. That is, right, let's see what this is. This is peach squash drink. Uh, yeah, sounds pretty interesting. Also, at the bottom there, there are apparently like, uh, mystery items, which, so, I guess, I was, were, uh, the Kit Kats, because the Kit Kats weren't mentioned, and the Candy Floss, I guess, that's, that's cool. Uh, right, let me move everything to the side for a second. Alright, I'm back, so, it's time to look at our Samurai Pen. I guess it's a pen, uh, it does say Samurai Pens. I don't know if there are different designs, um, or... What the deal? Actually, you know what? I'm going to check the cheat sheet. So, reading from this, this does actually come from a uh, company called Mini Katana, and apparently this, this pen has a $30 value. Um, I mean, everything has a value if you state it does. Uh, so, it does also come with an ink refill, so I will, I will give them kudos there. It's kind of fallen. Uh, hang on. <laughs> okay, well, that's the re ink refill. No, it's not. Where's the ink refill? Go? Oh, there you go. So that's the ink refill, uh, if anyone was interested. And time for our... Ooh, okay, that's that's a lot heavier than I expected it to be. So that is our katana. Um, I don't know how you, well you can see it with the messy background, but hey. Um, we've got the cool pommel. Are they called pommels on katanas? I don't know, but there you go. It's kind of... It's got the three-leaf clover kind of design. Uh, my oh no! I think I'm undoing the pen. How do I? How do I click the? Aha! I sorted it. You kind of twist it this way, and the nub comes out. Um, and you, you twist it back. But then, if you twist it too much that way, you start like undoing. I don't know. You start undoing the pen or something. But yeah, that's that's pretty cool. There is a hefty, heavy pen. It, it looks like. 
a sheathed katana to a degree, sort of. Uh, yeah, and it comes in a box, which is that's that's nice. Um, right, I'm gonna go put everything to the side as I kind of already have, and then we'll get into the wrap up and the banana man thing. Bobby. All right, I am back. So that is a collection of everything. First off, let's try this banana man. Um, banana chocolate covered marshmallow. Oh wow, good lord, that is. I don't know why I didn't expect it to be yellow, but that is that is very yellow. Cool. Right, uh, I'm going to go give it a try. Interesting. Um, it reminds me of, so years ago, I think they still do them in the UK, and probably in other countries, you can get like foam banana kind of sweets. It's got that same very strong artificial banana um, like taste, but the chocolate and the marshmallow give you like a weird kind of texture that I don't know, I think my mind's so used to foam bananas from my childhood that biting into this has kind of confused it. Because the the taste of the marshmallow, ironically, isn't as sweet as the chocolate. So it kind of gives it a slightly, like, not savoury, but like less sweet aftertaste. And it tastes a little bit of gelatin, obviously, because the marshmallow is, you know, I'm guessing it's not like the vegan version. So yeah, um... It's interesting, it's not bad, I just, I wouldn't necessarily buy one of these again. But you know, I'll finish it uh, off camera. Anyway, so, that about wraps up this episode of, I was going to say Japanese Snack Reviews, Japan Crate Unboxing. Uh, and this wraps up my series, in fact. This is the last Japan Crate I will be buying. Um, so, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, I will be reviewing a lot of these in Japanese Snack Reviews. Now, if you'd like to stick around for a minute or two and hear me rant, uh, I'm going to do that. If not, though, uh, you know, thanks for watching. I fully understand not everyone wants to hear me rant. But here goes. So, a few days ago, I got an email from FedEx telling me I owed them £50, which was a little bit confusing. I was like, well, I, I don't know what it is I could be receiving that has incurred such a high charge. And I looked into it, and it is this very Japan crate here, the one that came mangled. So I kind of looked into it and I was like, how does that make sense? Because the value of this crate is $47 or $48 or something, which comes to, I don't know, about £45, £40, somewhere in that range. So I was like, how is my, how is the import fee more expensive than the item itself? And I think I've worked out what has happened. So I subscribed to Japan Crate for three month stints which comes to like $130, $140 or something, something like that. And I think when this was shipped, the declared value is my three-month subscription and not for the one crate, which means that the £50 is the import fee for what they assumed was all three crates for $140 or whatever dollars it was. Um, so I emailed Japan Crate, uh, complaining about this, obviously, because as I mentioned at the start, this crate has cost me almost £100. Is it worth it? Absolutely fucking not. So I emailed them, and to be, to be fair, right, this isn't just a, a rag and a rant on Japan Crate. They got back to me within like two minutes. It was super good. Basically, I just outlined, hey, this is what happened, this is unacceptable, I do not want to pay this, can you just not send me any more crates? Um, do I think two more crates? Just don't send them. Throw them in the bin, it would be cheaper if you did that. Um, and they did get back to me, uh, you know, and said, really sorry this has happened, they're going to escalate it to, you know, someone else so they can do that. And, to be honest, within a day, I think, uh, like, it was at like 2am or something, uh, I mean, technically the day following, but I sent the email, you know, midday, um, within like 12 hours, I had a refund for one of the crates, uh, the kind of like August one, I think I'm due. However, they couldn't do it with July's one because I think it's about to be shipped. However, they did say if I, uh, if I refused it through FedEx and sent it back, they'd refund me. So, to be fair to Japan Crate, they have done everything they can, conceivably. However... I am in no way ever going to subscribe to Japan Crate again. This is ultimately their doing. They chose FedEx for this shipment for some reason. I don't know if maybe because this is a heavier crate, this is like set off something where the other crates didn't and FedEx 
took it in. I don't fully understand how import taxes work. I just know they bend you over the barrel and take you for all they can. So, I'm not fully blaming Japan Crate here. It is partly FedEx's fault as well. However, I feel like they should have maybe taken this into account. And this is unacceptable. This is disgusting. Um, I genuinely, and I'll be honest with you guys, part of me didn't want to make this video at all. And I, I'm really sorry if this was difficult to like listen to, if I was overly critical or something. It's difficult looking at something you've been ripped off for. I'm sure you've all been there. Uh, and also, part of me <laughs> did actually kind of want to, just for like the feeling um, of starting the video and be like, wait, what in the crate? And then cut to me just throwing it in the bin unopened. But again, I, I didn't want to do that because, uh, you know, it, I, I paid I paid for it. I don't like wasting food. It, you know, it would have rubbed me the wrong way. And I feel like I'd have been going down the kind of like clickbait hype beast kind of thing. And that's not what this channel is about. But yeah, that, that, that's my rant. Um, thank you if you did sit through that. But yeah, um, th this is the end. Honestly, I think this is the end of subscription crates. They're cool. They're not worth the risk. They're, they're not, and honestly, a lot of the time, I don't even know if they're fully worth the value. I mean, I think of the snacks you get and stuff, you do get the value of the crate. I, I do genuinely believe that, in a sense, I am saving money. If I bought all of these items piecemeal, uh, even discounting shipping, I think I am probably saving some money. Uh, I'm jury's out on this pen thing, I don't think it's worth it, but still. However... I think that you know there's a hit and miss. That's that's the whole joy of subscription boxes, I guess. You don't you never really know what you're gonna get. And I've been happy with most of my items, even the stuff I didn't like. I was like, hey, that's fine, that's cool. I, I I'd have bought something similar in a supermarket myself and been like, oh, I don't like that snack. I won't buy it again. So you know, but yeah, I'm just kind of rambling now. Um, but this does this is the end of my subscription box journey as fucking cringe as that sounds good christ um and i appreciate as well it's also my best source of views so this channel ain't gonna grow um i i don't think i'm gonna get many more subscribers but i'm fine with that i i prefer to do what i like and forever be a like 400 subscription uh channel than you know chase the thing i mean part of me part of the reason i got back onto the subscription box like hey, it did pretty well for views you know, I, I, I'll I go for that, but then I kind of like realised eh, I'm not enjoying it as much. I do like uh, doing Japanese snack reviews, though. That's fun. And I will keep doing that for like, I don't know, three or four more episodes. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments if you guys have subscribed to Japan Crate and what your experience is. If you live in the US, you're probably not going to be like taken advantage of with import fees as much. So, I mean, it might make sense if you still live in the US and you like... Japan Crate makes sense, but if you do live in the UK or somewhere else, I highly recommend us unsubscribing as soon as you can. I don't know if going forward every crate is going to be hit with FedEx import fees, I don't know, but I'm going to err on the side of caution because I don't want to drop like hundreds, you know, of extra pounds just to receive cool snacks, but they're not worth that additional amount. Um... Sorry, I really am just rambling now. I'll let you get on with it. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll be making other videos though, so stay tuned for those. And until next time, goodbye.